Okay, so in the last tutorial, we took a look at this Leo game that I'm working on with a, a, another friend of mine. And in this one, um, I was going to sort of build on nav meshes and artificial intelligence and locomotion systems and everything like that in that tutorial. But I feel like it might have been a bit thick because we have so many things going on in that tutorial anyway. So what I think I might do is create a pretty, um, create a bunch of smaller projects that are all based on again the different types of artificial intelligence so this one we're going to talk about a finite state machine and finite state machines deal specifically or they deal primarily I should say with waypoints so for example in our game uh, this in this project we're going to create a very simple tank game where you drive the tank around with WASD and you actually point the turret at the top with the mouse and you fire at a tank enemy the enemy tank is actually going to follow the finite state machine that I talked about earlier. So, for example, the, the state machine controls the different states of the, the tank. So, if it comes too close to you, it'll attack. If you get away, it'll return back to the nearest waypoint. Now, this is a very simple waypoint system. Artificial intelligence can get extremely involved. Like, you can have systems that are based on flocking, and I hope I can get to that in a tutorial, where you have a group of enemies that attack you, or like a bird. Um, anyway, that's sort of my passion when it comes to learning how to script. So, uh, so I'm not talking too much and we can actually get to working. I want you to take a look at this project. We have a tank that I built in Maya, very simple. And this tank is a, has a tank body, which is here, and it just has a tank turret. Now, what I'd like you to um, do for your your project or your assignment if you're in my class and you're learning this is I'd love your 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 assignment is going to be to model your own type of tank that's a lot better than this I mean obviously it should be portfolio worthy especially if you're an artist okay so all I have let's take a look at my structure here I have an assets folder and within this assets folder I have a models folder and a scripts folder inside of models now if you've done my other tutorials this should be nothing new to you I have a non playable character and a playable character folder now, inside of scripts, I have nothing. So let's go ahead and create our first script, which is a C-sharp script. And I'm going to call it tank controller, because this is what's going to control our tank. And on the highest level of my tank, I'm just going to throw this tank controller. And let's double click this and open it up. OK, so I'm going to zoom in on this. Now, there's a couple things I know I'm going to need. First, I'm going to need a public variable. And now remember, the data type for game objects is a capital G for game object, and it's just going to be called bullet. And that's where we're going to store our, our tank bullet. I'm also going to create a couple private variables. One that is a game object, and I'm going to store transform on this, and it's going to be called turret. Now, this is going to be a reference to this turret here, okay? And then I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it one more time. And I'm going to call this um, bullet spawn point. Because this is going to be an empty game object that our turret is going to um, reference. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to save this. And inside of my turret object, I'm just going to go to game object, create empty, and I'm going to name this turret spawn point. Okay, and I'm going to drop this on top of tank turret. All right, so you can hear, see here turret spawn point. I'm going to actually select my tank turret here, and you can see when I select my turret spawn point, it's located down there. If you go here and you hit reset, it'll actually reset your turret spawn point to the base of your tank turret. So by selecting your turret spawn point, I'm going to click up here and just move it to the front nozzle of my gun. Okay. All right, let's jump back to our code. Now, just as a reminder, void start runs at the very beginning of every game that we play. Void update runs every frame. So there's a couple things I'd like to start spawn, or I'd like to have access to at the very beginning. For example, the turret and the turret bullet spawn point. I would like those to be loaded right away so that we know exactly which turret it is. Because right now these variables aren't doing anything, but we want to make a reference to those objects so we can code them. 
So let's type in turret equals lowercase game object. That way we're referring to an actual game object. Capital G, remember, is for a data type. Dot transform dot get child. Now what get child will allow us to do is remember this turret is a child of our t tank. So let me open that up. This is a child of a parent object tank. So when we say get child, it's going to reference something. Okay. Now I want to show you how to use the get child in a, I'm going to show you that right now. Um, and I want to try to be as explicit as possible. So we have to say get child dot transform because the object itself has a transform. Okay. Get child is a method that already exists. So if I type in zero here and then in my update, well, actually I could just do it here. I'm going to do debug dot log and I'm just going to copy and paste turret in there. Okay, now I'm going to hit control S. Now let's jump back into Unity. Remember, we want to get, and look, uh, what I'm really trying to point out here is this number zero. We want to be able to get the child so we can program this. Remember, we're going to be moving it with our mouse of the body object. So I typed in get child zero. Let's see what it brings up when I press play. Notice that it says tank body here. Tank body is actually zero. So let's see what happens if I drag this up here and I, oh, you know what, I unselected it. No, it doesn't look like it. All right, let's press play again. Tank body. Okay, so let's see what happens if I change this to one. And I hit control S to save that. I jump back into Unity and I press play. Ah, see how it says tank turret? So that's what's kind of a neat feature of this get child. You can actually specify by position number. And remember, position number starts with zero. So as you probably already figured out, I'm just going to select bullet spawn point here. And remember, I want to have I want to have access to that. So I'm going to say equals. It equals turret dot get child. Now we're not going to do one here. We're going to do zero dot transform. That might call him. And I'm going to change this to bullet spawn point so we can see what's what's happening there. So now when I press play, we get turret spawn point, which is here. Because that's at act position zero. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control S to save even my scene here. And I'm just going to name this. I'm going to create a folder called scenes. And then within that folder, I'm going to call this level one. And just save that off. All right, let me pause the video and jump back into the scripting. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to create a bunch of variables, uh, private variables that are going to control the overall speed of my model. So I'm going to make a per private variable called uh, current speed target speed station speed We'll shrink that down to like rod speed. Okay, now it's okay to put these all in the same line, and I'm explicitly setting them all to zero. That's why I'm doing that. But I'm going to create a couple more private floats that are going to have their own. Um, they're actually going to have values. So, for example, there's one called forward speed. I'll equal that to 300 for now, and I'll copy that. I'm going to make another one called. Backward speed. Let's call these max forward speed. Max backward speed. Copy private float here. And let's explicitly make sure that we write turn rotation speed. Make that equal to NF sure that this is negative here because it's backwards. 
Alright, I'm going to stop this tutorial now, and we'll just continue scripting in the next tutorial.